Did you know that we can actually put cement in your bones? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 72-year-old female who slipped on ice and fell straight on her bottom. She came to the emergency department where a CT scan was done of her back due to her complaints of pain and showed this. What we see on this CT scan is what's called an L1 compression fracture. You see, in our spines, our vertebrae are shaped like little squares, like these guys right here, and that you can tell that this bone is a little bit more squished. I also showed you guys this MRI scan that was done of her lower back, and you can tell that this fracture is acute because of the discoloration as compared to the other vertebrae in the spine. If you've ever had an MRI done of your back, you know that they put you through that machine back and forth many times. That's because they do different sequences of your spine. This particular sequence right here is called a stir image, and that can show acuity of fractures. And here you can tell that this L1 fracture is acute. Sometimes on imaging, it's difficult to tell if a fracture is new or old. So this type of sequence on MRI will help us determine whether or not the fracture is new or old. I can actually tell on the CT scan that it's new because this fracture has a cleft inside of it. Cleft is a pocket of air that can happen within a fracture. And in this particular image, you can see the air within the fracture, which signifies a significant absence of bone. And in my experience, fractures that look like that hurt pretty bad. And the more concerning thing is that over time, because of that void of bone, it can continue to collapse and cause a kyphotic deformity. It can even progress to what's called a vertebrum planum, which is what this arrow is pointing to, and it's essentially like a linear place where the bone used to be. So let's talk a little bit about what a compression fracture is and how we can treat them. Compression fractures are small breaks or cracks within the vertebral body. They can happen spontaneously in the presence of osteoporosis or weak bone, and they can also be the result of trauma. There is over 1 million compression fractures that happen per year in the United States, and one in four women over 50 will experience a vertebral compression fracture. Nearly half of people over 80 will have at least one compression fracture. So what are the symptoms? Symptoms range from having minimal pain at all to having severe debilitating pain that needs treatment. Symptoms include acute back pain, decreased mobility in your spine, or progressive kyphosis, like in this depiction of a patient that has had progressive compression fractures over time. And let's be honest, we've all seen women that look like that, and that's because of osteoporosis and compression fractures of their spine. As I stated earlier, we can diagnose a compression fracture on x-ray, CT scan, or MRI, but oftentimes to determine whether they're a new or old compression fracture, we use MRI or a bone scan. And we need to know if they're new or old because old compression fractures that are healed don't typically cause pain and don't need treatment. So what is the treatment? Oftentimes minor compression fractures can be treated with conservative measures such as bracing and anti-inflammatory medications to treat the pain. In patients with severe pain or fractures that look like the picture that I showed earlier and which we know may continue to progress over time, we recommend a procedure called a kyphoplasty. A kyphoplasty is a minimally invasive procedure that can typically be done outpatient. We place a needle into the vertebral compression fracture, inflate a balloon, which will create a cavity, and then we backfill that cavity with bone cement. That cement hardens in a few minutes and the procedure is done. Hyphoplasties are typically reserved for patients that do have debilitating pain and not every compression fracture will need a kyphoplasty. In our patient's case, she was admitted to the hospital with debilitating back pain due to that fracture, so we did perform a kyphoplasty. The procedure was performed the following day and she was discharged home without any pain. As an outpatient, I did perform a bone density test to evaluate her bones for osteoporosis, and in fact, she did have osteoporosis that needed treatment. In patients with any history of a compression fracture, they should be screened for osteoporosis because that makes them 10 times more likely to develop another fracture. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.